assignment we're looking at is the Chapter 5 Unit Review. This comes from your yellow book. We have 20 questions, all multiple choice. So we start with number 1. We have triangle UVW. M is the midpoint of VU, so let's mark that one. N is the midpoint of VW. And we need to find which statement is true. So if we go through and start eliminating things, at least finding what we know. VM and VN. First of all, by what I have, VM has a single mark, VN has a double. They're not on the same side, they don't share a midpoint, they're kind of part of a triangle, V and M, but it really doesn't do anything for us. So we're going to skip that one, but it's probably not going to work for us. VU equals 2VM. Okay, VU is the whole thing, and that's equal to 2 times VM. Well, if I took VM, which is this distance, and doubled it, I would have VM, and really MU, because they're the same. And that would total up and be the same. Now, we also know that VM is half VU because M is the midpoint. So that's actually looking like a really good choice. If we keep looking, MN and UV. Well, MN, UV, those are not equal. Maybe MN would be half UW, but we don't even know that, so that one's out. Uh, VW is half VN. Well, this one looks close, but if we look at VW, it's not half of VN. What we'd actually want for that one is one half VW equals VN. And that would actually fit to the midpoint. So that one's out, and we're going to go with B. For number two, which statement is true? Well, I have 73 and 44. That makes my third angle 63 degrees. By that, I know I can put my angles in order. I know it goes angle B, angle A, then angle C for the inequalities. B is the smallest, C is the largest. And if I look at A, well, A less than B, that's not true. A is 63, B is 44, so I know that one's already out. Now I can list the sides. The side opposite B is AC. It's the two letters that don't use B. The side opposite A is CB. And the side opposite C is AB. So I can look at my inequalities now. AC is the smallest, and that's less than CB, which is what I have here. Looks like a good answer. CB less than AB, that's not true. AB is the biggest. It should be going that way. And AC greater than AB, well, AC is the smallest, so that one should actually be going the other way, so we're going to go with B, because AB is less than CB, or in other words, what we had right here. Third one, what do you call a perpendicular segment from a vertex to the opposite side of a triangle? So it's perpendicular from the vertex to the opposite side. It's either a mid-segment, perpendicular bisector, median, or altitude. Well, if we start going through things, a mid-segment involves midpoints. We know nothing about a midpoint here, so that's out. A perpendicular bisector. We have the perpendicular, but it would also be a bisector. We, again, know nothing about a midpoint. That one's out. Median. Again, a median is from the midpoint to a vertex. Nothing about a midpoint. That one's out. It leaves D, which is our correct answer, the altitude. That is the definition of an altitude. It's the perpendicular segment from the vertex to the opposite side. For four, we have the legs are 72, the crossbar is 24, and that crossbar happens to be at a midpoint. 72 doesn't really matter here. We're not going to use that value. The key thing is we have that 24 is at a midpoint, which makes it a mid-segment, which means this side out here, the side it's parallel to, is going to be two times 24 or 48. And that's just by the mid-segment. Number five, Amy is making triangles using different length straws. She has a three-inch straw and a four-inch straw. Which can she not use to form a triangle? So we need what could be the third side. For our third side, we need the difference between the two, four minus three, and the sum between the two, four plus three. So I know my third side is between 7 and 1. 
Now, it's not 7. It's between 1 and 7. So if I thought of the whole numbers, it would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, if I look at my possible answers again, I'm looking for one that, which is not from a triangle. 5 is between them. 4 is between them. 6 is between them. 7 is not. It needs to be between that range. Now, if we tried 7, I would have 3, 4, and 7. We also have the other rule that the longest side has to be less than the sum of the other two. Well, 7 is not less than 7. So that would almost show us that it doesn't work, and that's why it fails. Number 6, determine the largest angle in GHJ. The largest angle is opposite the longest side. Longest side is JG. So the angle opposite that is angle H. And again, that opposite side is not going to have the same letter. So JG is opposite H, angle H is our answer. If we go to number 7, this one looks at mid-segments. BDF are midpoints. So these are all mid-segments. We have EC is 40, DF is 18, and they want AC. Now, I know that AC and DF are parallel because it's a mid-segment for DF. I also know that this length, DF, is the same as CB and BA, which means if these are both 18, then the whole thing would be the sum of the two, which is 36. So AC is 36. That 40 is there because you're going to, it wants you to think, well, maybe it's equilateral, so that would be the same value, or maybe I have to subtract, maybe I have to find some other value with it. We're not going to use that. We need to double the 18 because we have 18, 18 here, and get 36. Number 8 is another mid-segment problem. I have 45s for those segments. I have 37s for those segments. So that means the 26, to get to my outer side, I need to multiply it by 2. 26 times 2 is 52. So I get D. Number 9, now it's a little more algebraic. I have to solve for X first. So I know I need to either multiply this by 2 to go that way, or divide by 2 to go in the opposite direction. So you could say 2 times 2X minus 5 equals 18, or 1 half times 18 equals 2X minus 5. Because half of this is going to be that mid-segment. I'm going to do the half this time, just because it leaves me with 9 equals 2x minus 5. We add 5, I get 14 equals 2x, and x is 7. If I plugged it in and did this one, I would have 4x minus 10 equals 28. I would get 4x equals 28, which again is 7 also. Also, we can see if we plug it in, 2 times 7 is 14. Minus 5 is 9. 9 is half of 18. So we can even see that answer works. For number 10, if I just redraw the information we have, I have 150, 150, 180, 175, and 175. These are the same. These are the same. Which means this is a mid-segment to that side. Well, the mid-segment is half of the 180, so 90 is our answer. And that's the height of the tree. Number 11 is an angle bisector problem. This point Q is equidistant to the sides. That means these angles are equal, so this is also 18, or SQ bisects the angle, makes it equal parts. So QST is 18 degrees. Number 12, determine the length of AB given that DB is the median and, and AC is 46. So if AC is 46 and DB is a median, what we know about a median is it goes from a vertex to a midpoint. So this point B is the midpoint. 46 is the whole thing. I divide it by 2 and I get 23 and 23 for each part, which means AB, or say, yeah, AB, which we're looking for, is 23. For number 13, determine which lengths 
can be measures for the sides of the triangle. So here we're looking at the longest side is less than the sum of the other two sides. So 22 less than 14 plus 7 gives us 22 less than 21. That is not true, so that does not make a triangle. 19 less than 14 plus 5. That gives us 19 less than 19. That's not true, doesn't give us a triangle. 22 less than 14 plus 6 gives us 22 less than 20. That's not true, doesn't give us a triangle. Last one, 19 less than 5 plus 15 gives us 19 less than 20. That's a true statement. That gives us a triangle, so D is our answer. Okay, on to our last page, number 14, which is going to be quite a long problem. You need to list the sides of triangle ABC in order from shortest to longest. Before I can figure out the order of the sides, I have to figure out the order of the angles. In order to figure out the order of the angles, I have to figure out what the angles are. So, I'm going to take these three values and I'm going to solve for x. Because if I solve to find what x is, I can plug it back in and find what all my angles are. So, I use the triangle sum to add them all up, set them equal to 180. I have 13x, 2x, and negative 2x, so that stays at 13x. I have negative 2, negative 13, and positive 39, which gives me positive 24. I have 13x equals 156, so x is 12. Now that I have x is 12, I plug them in to find a, b, and C. Well, once you plug them in, you actually get C is 15, B is 11, and that turns out that A is 154. We're going to save time here and not plug them in, but you can plug these in for X and find the value. Now if I draw my triangle ABC, I know that A is 154, B is 11, C is 15 going from shortest to longest. So my sh smallest angle is angle B, the next angle C, and then angle A. I then go the opposite sides to that. Opposite of B is AC. Opposite of C is AB. Opposite of A is BC. So the answer that's AC, AB, BC would be the shortest to longest, and that is answer C. For 15, it's looking at an indirect proof, and we need to just identify that first step. For an indirect proof, our first step is we're going to assume the opposite of the conclusion. So we're going to assume the opposite. So, the measure of L cannot be greater than 90. The opposite of that would be to assume the measure of angle L can be greater than 90, so it's greater than 90 degrees. Looks like it matches exactly with D, so we're going to go with answer D. If you notice, A, B, and C all kind of reference that given. We don't touch the given for our first step for an indirect proof. It's always looking at what we're trying to find, that, that prove or the uh, conclusion of our statement. For 16, we're looking at a coordinate proof. We need to find the coordinates for point Z. If I look at how I got to Z, really this line out here, I went out U, U units to the right, and then to get down to this line, I went down negative P units. So to get to Z, I'm going to go U to the right, negative P down, which gives you my coordinates for D. 17. Which statement must be true regarding the figure shown? Okay, I have two sets of sides that work. So these are like the arms almost. 
I have 36 degrees, 35 degrees. If I notice, these arms are open a little bit more because they're 36 as opposed to 35. That means this side, EF, will probably be a little bit bigger than IJ. So EF is going to be greater than IJ. 45, we don't really need it. So EF is bigger than IJ, and that's C, our answer. The same idea applies on 18. I have these sides with 15. I have 29 on both. There's another side. One angle, one angle opens to a 24 side. The other opens to a 25. So that means if I take the measure of angle UVT, which is the top one, since that opens to 24 and the other one to a 25, I know that 25 is going to be bigger, and we're going to call that angle WBT, which is the bottom. So UBT bigger than WBT. For number 19, we need to find the shortest segment in the figure. And to do that, we're going to find the shortest segment in each triangle first. If I look at triangle DHK, 53 is the smallest angle. So KH is the smallest side in that triangle. In triangle DLH, 51 is the smallest angle. So the side opposite that is DH, so that's the smallest angle in, or the smallest side in that triangle. If I redraw that triangle, DKH, I have 53 62 and 65. And these are my two candidates I could have, DH or KH. Well, the shortest one in just that triangle is KH because it's opposite to 52. So C is my answer. DH is the shortest in the right triangle, but I need the left one. I need a total overall, and it's going to be KH. Last one for 20, I need an altitude, and like we talked about earlier, the altitude is the perpendicular line through the vertex. Only one of them has a perpendicular, so it is WY is the altitude. Um, let's see, TZ would be a median, UR would be an angle bisector. We don't have a perpendicular bisector, but that one is an altitude.